Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a custom movement system in Roblox. Um, this system will cover it's kind of a combination of my previous videos and stuff. Um, so this system will include a dash system, so you can dash to the you know uh, to the left, to the right, behind, uh, back, like do a backflip or uh, dash to the front. Um, it will include custom run slash walk animations as well as a shift to sprint system. And yeah, so there's overall movement stuff. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into it. This would be a very simple video. It's like less than a hundred lines of code. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay. First things first, let's go ahead and insert a remote event into replicated storage. Click the plus, the plus icon, click remote event, rename this remote event to movement event. Then we're going to open up starter player. You're going to insert a local script into starter player scripts, rename the script to movement script in parentheses, put local. Boom, we're going to delete print hello world. We're going to create five variables. First, we need to get the user input service. So I'm going to say local UIS is equal to game get service user input service. Then I'm going to create a variable for the movement event. So local movement event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child movement event. Then I'm going to create a variable for the local player. So local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. Then I'm going to set up some stuff for the dash system. So first things first, I'm going to say, um, oh, actually, um, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really need this. So yeah, I don't really need that part anymore, actually. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. We just got to create a variable for the dash direction. So let's say local, uh, dash direction is equal to, it's going to be a string. So just, uh, blank quotation marks for now then we're going to set up the first function we're going to say uis that input began connect function in parentheses put input comma processed enter then you're going to say if input dot key code is equal to and i'm or sorry not, sorry not key code dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not process which pretty much means the player is not typing in chat enter then if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot here's where you would put your uh your sprint key bind so i don't know whatever you want and stuff you, most games is usually just left shift so that's what i'm gonna go with so left shift or right, enter then you would set the uh, character's walk speed so you would say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed is equal to 22 uh, this is what i'm setting it to but you guys can set it to however much you want then I would set up, I'm going to press enter, put a space, then I'm going to say else if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code. Then here we're setting up the dash system. So you're just going to go for the four movement key binds W, A, S, and D. You know, the key, the key binds to go forward, to the left, to the right, and to the back. So we're going to, you know, W, and then we're, we're going to put or. And then um, we could just copy and paste control C, control V, control V, and control V then delete that enter right and then we got to change these obviously so w a s and finally d right so w a s d for our movement key bonds and then all you're simply going to say is dash direction is equal to input dot key code dot name right and then you're going to set up another else if statement this time you're going to say else if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code here's where you're going to put your dash key bind again usually q but you guys can choose whatever you want and then you're going to say and player dot character that is running that value is equal to true right so oh press enter so we're checking this on the local script and stuff right this is just simply to help the performance let's say there was an exploiter that was able to fire their motive and like move like get past this if statement and fire their motive and it wouldn't matter because it's, it's already check being checked on the server script anyway and stuff this is just simply so that we can you know help like it just helps with performance so for example if someone is trying to dash when they're they just dashed like half a second ago right it would read on the local script that they um that they are not able to right now so it wouldn't fire their mode event worst case if there was an exploiter that was able to bypass it then they would just fire their mode event multiple times but nothing would actually happen since it's being checked both locally and on the server side so from here um we would, we would fire the mode events movement event fire server in quotation marks name of the event is dash then comma send over the dash direction right 
And then that's it for that. We can then set up a second function. We're going to say UIS that input began connect or sorry, not input began input ended connect function and parentheses same thing input comma processed into you're then going to say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not processed enter then if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code then the same key bind you use for the sprint so left shift so when you, so when you stop pressing that key bind and press enter we're going to say player dot character that humanoid that walk speed is set back to whatever your default walk speed is then we can move on to the server script so just explain two things before we actually move on to there first things first i do have two sounds in the sound servers one the dash sound the other's footstep sound except for when i'm walking um wait did i ever actually i don't think i yeah i don't think about it i don't know if i ever played yeah i don't know if i ever really played the sound i guess we could really Mm. yeah i feel like i don't need this actually so i'll leave this out anyway so we have a dash sound effect right this is option you guys don't have to do this if you don't want to uh just go to the toolbox which are dash and you'll find uh sound you'll find sound effects and stuff right and then inside server script service i have a whole bunch of animation that you guys can clearly see we're going to put these inside of the script so click the plus icon you're going to want to insert a server script rename that script to movement script in parentheses put server right and then you're going to want to insert all of these animations into it. So as you can see, I have five animations. So one is the walk slash run animation and stuff. And then the other four are the dash animations for each direction and stuff. You guys can't use my animation IDs. You guys have to use your own. You can go to the toolbox, find your own animations. I do not make animations. I just got these from the toolbox. So then I'm going to delete print hello world. You need to get three variables. First, we're going to get the debris service. So local DS is equal to game get service debris then get the sound service local ss is equal to game get service sound service right then i'm going to create a variable for the movement event just like we did in the local script so local move movement event is equal to game that replicated stores or for child movement event right then i'm going to set up the first function for when players join the game i'm going to say game dot players that player added connect function in parentheses put plr register for the player enter then you're going to set up the next function you're going to say player dot character added connect function in parentheses put character enter you're then going to create the can dash and is running bool values so first first we'll create the can dash so can dash as the name implies we're going to use this to check to see if a player is able to dash this is going to be our cooldown right or how we'll check to see if the player is on cooldown so it's going to be a bool value so instance that new bool value parent this to the player's character because we want this to reset every time they die so can dash dot name is equal to the same thing can dash by default can dash value should be set to true and then we can really just copy and paste this here so some time control c oh my bad control v then you're just gonna you're just gonna want to rename this to is running so this is how we know if a player is running <clears throat> and then we're just going to copy and paste this so control c control v control v control v now this time you want to set this this one's value to false and then we're going to update the player's animations so that uh they have custom walk animations so we're going to say character dot animate dot idle dot animation one dot animation i d is equal to notation marks rbx asset id colon two forward slashes and then you're just gonna put your uh, animation here so i'm gonna just get mine i'm just get mine um i'm trying to think actually wait the idle animation oh yeah i just really oh yeah, yeah i forgot I actually oh my fault guys you actually don't need this you actually don't need this i actually just remember you don't need the walk animation you need the dash animation but not the walk animation i forgot that since we're um setting the animation deeds we're just putting it here but I'm just gonna copy and paste it though, because yeah. So I'm say one seven six. This is my ID by the way. So two one zero seven eight nine eight. And then you can really just copy and paste this three more times. So control C, control V, control V, control V. Then for the second one, you're just gonna change this part right here to animation two. ID is the same. And then the second one is when we get into the actual uh, run. So run, then run, anim. And then here is when I'm going to change the ID, right? So walk animation. Um, so I don't need this, so I'm gonna actually just delete that. So I'm gonna just set this to the ID. So it was one seven six. Yes, yeah, so actually it's very similar. 
Okay. Then control C, control V, come down here. Then you want to change this to walk. And then this is going to be walk anim. Then we're going to set up a function after all of this. We're then going to put, oh, by the way, this is your animation ID, just in case people were confused. That's your animation ID. So you would set that. So then I'm going to say character dot humanoid dot running connect function close parentheses enter and stuff oh sorry not close parentheses in parentheses put speed and then you're gonna use the if statement you're gonna say if speed is greater than zero right that means obviously they're they're obviously running you're gonna say player dot character or really we could just say character I think and we're gonna say character so we get we're gonna say character dot is running that value is equal to true and then we're going to say else which means the speed is is uh less than zero which means they're no longer running so then we would say character dot is running that value the opposite so is equal to false right then we're done we're done with this whole function and now we can move to the second and last main function so let me just double check to make sure okay i'm good so for the second last function we're going to say movement event dot on server events connect function in parentheses, you're going to put PLR short for the player, comma, event type, then comma, arg1 short for argument number one, enter, create a variable for the player's character. Local character is equal to player dot character. Then set up an if statement. You're going to say if event type is equal to invitation marks dash and character dot can dash that value is equal to true. This is what I meant when I said it's being checked both on the local script and on the server script. Then you're going to say you're going to say character that can dash that value is equal to false because they can no longer dash. Then you're going to set up a delayed function. So delay two seconds. Here's where you're going to put your cooldown time. How much time uh, will have to elapse before they can dash again. So I'm going to say two seconds, comma, function, close parentheses, enter. And then we're going to set it back. So character can dash that value will be set back to true. And after the delayed function, I'm going to start setting up the stuff for the dash. So first, We'll set the dash direction. So dash direction is equal to argument number one. Then we're gonna, get, we're gonna create the attachment. So attachment is equal to instance that new attachment. Parent this to the characters humanoid root part. Then create the linear velocity. Local linear velocity is equal to instance that new quotation marks linear velocity. Then I'm gonna parent this to the attachment right. And then I'm going to create a part. So local part is equal to instance that new invitation marks uh, part. Then I'm going to parent the part to the workspace. Set some properties for the part real quick. Let me scroll down. And this is on the, I'm going to set some properties. So part dot anchored. Of course, we want it to be anchored. So part dot anchored is equal to two. Part dot transparency equal to one. And then part dot can collide is equal to false. We don't want players to know it even exists. Then, um, I don't believe I need, or yeah, no, I, I do think I need it like this. Then I'm going to create a multiplier, or multiplier, sorry, I always mess it up. Multiplier, not multiplier. And then we're going to set up an if statement. So if dash direction is equal to quotation marks W, enter. Then you're going to say multi multiply, multiplier is equal to C frame, not C frame, C frame dot new in parentheses. Then you're going to say negative one, comma negative one, comma negative 20, so they go forward, then throw an else. And then you can just copy and paste what well, everything we just did. Control C, Control V. Then you're going to copy and paste the entire else of statement. Control C, Control V, Control V. Then now you're just going to uh, go through and update them accordingly. So for this, this is A. So we want to move back. So for this, um, negative 20 here, set this to negative 1, right? Then come down here. And then right here, we have S. So to go back. So for this, all I'm going to do is just change uh, the negative to a positive 20. Then here we have D, so to the right. So for this, this is going to be a positive 20. And then set this back to negative 1. And then we're done there. Now to set up the animation track, so local AT is equal to character dot humanoid dot animator load animation. In parentheses, you're going to just say script it's very important that you name the animations the same as i have because you'll notice that the naming pattern is the letter of the direction they're trying to dash in um the word dash and then the word animation so i'm gonna say script regular bracket dash direction dot dot quotation marks dash animation right 
enter then you're gonna say at then you're gonna say at play right and then um i'm gonna use the sound service to play the dash sound effect so dash play then i'm gonna set the part c frame so part dot c frame is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot c frame times multiplier and then after that system properties with the, with the linear velocity and we are done so linear velocity dot max four is equal to five nines one two three four five then linear velocity dot vector velocity is equal to in parentheses you're going to say part dot position minus character dot humanoid root part dot position then go on the outside and say die unit times vector three dot new in parentheses you're going to say 100 comma zero comma 100 enter then linear velocity dot attachment zero is equal to attachment and lastly you're going to say ds to the resurface add item you're going to add the attachment oh sorry not the animation track attachment comma 0 0.1 seconds so it'll show you after 0 0.1 seconds hey we can go ahead and test to make sure this works as always if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description highly recommend that okay so as you guys can clearly see when i'm as I'm walking, you can see this is clearly not the default Roblox and Roblox walk animation and stuff. So I got the custom walk animations and stuff, right? And then I have my shift locked on. So okay, I just want to clarify something. So if you're um if you're uh what, what is it called? If your shift like shift to sprint keybind is left shift and you have on uh what is this called? I forgot what this is called. Shift lock, yeah. If you have on, if you have shift lock enabled, you have to disable this setting to be able to, uh, to, for it to be able to recognize, uh, you holding down shift and stuff because it thinks it's just assigned here, or well, no, it is just assigned here. So I'm gonna test the, the uh, the dash system first. So, oh, unable to assign property attachment object expected constraint. Oh, my bad. How did I literally mess up? Okay, so as I'm pretty sure you guys heard me say that it was supposed to be attachment. How did I literally miss it on, on like almost the last line of the script? Okay, so boom, front dash, side dash, well, other side dash, and then back dash. Okay, and then let me oh let me test cooldown. Okay, perfect. There's a cooldown. Okay, very nice. All right, now I'm gonna disable the uh, shift lock thing, and then now I'm gonna test the shift to sprint. So you'll notice if I hold down shift, you'll see my player uh, speed increase. So yeah, we have we have a custom movement system, shift to sprint, custom walk slash run animations, as well as the dash system stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave like, subscribe. Um, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys been showing the channel. I really do appreciate it. We are on the way to, uh, what are we on the way to? I think. On a way to uh, yeah twelve thousand now sorry you you guys just be going crazy with love and support i really do appreciate it because that's where it's like i was just celebrating 10k two weeks ago now on a way to 12k thank y'all so much i really do appreciate it. and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching